for those of you that have started with recon, how many of you have a script that looks something along the lines of run subfinder, run a mass, run fast DNS? Now, how many of you have actually thought about whether that's providing value to you? I think it's not. I think it's a mistake. So why? <laughs> it's a, I always do this like, oh, you know, I feel like I'm always criticizing. I don't mean to be doing that. Uh, I guess it's coming from videos where I'm picking on common pain points to try and help give more advice. So don't take it as a critique where I'm like, oh, you bad bounty hunter, blah, blah, blah. Not that at all. It's actually really good if you've started that because you're starting down a chain of thinking that matures into the chain of thinking I'm going to present today. So the thinking I want to present today is using sources more directly. When you chain from a, ma a mass to subfinder to fast DNS, you're getting two things. One, you're getting a tool that's jammed a lot of sources in and hasn't put a lot of thought into it. I, there's a lot of sources in these tools that are broken, don't use things as well as they could, and you're not aware of that if you haven't dug into those sources directly and done independent tests with a mass, independent tests with subfinder and, and dug into it. The second problem is that when you're chaining these together, you're running the same sources more than once. And, you know, as I like to do, there's actually three. The third problem is that you're losing the benefit of API keys, knowing what paid services to go for and what services these may not cover. So let's go to the beginning. Let's start with what people used to consider the mainstay of Recon pre these services, which is the Rapid7 FDNS data set and how I like to consume it, which is using DNS grep. Before anything else, we should talk about what the Rapid7 FDNS dataset is and why I'm bringing it up here. So Rapid7 have a project called the Open Data Project. There's two ways you can consume this project. One, you can access it without an account, unauthenticated, you can wrap curl around it and pull it into your project. The other method, and the one I prefer, but it does have a more difficult barrier to entry, is applying for a researcher account and getting more regular updates. So as of recording right now, the public data set is around seven days behind the researcher data set. So by using the researcher data set, I get more rapid data. That's important to remember later on as we get into using DNS grep, because standing up your own instance will give you benefit if you've also got a researcher account. So the specific case we're looking at here is the FDNS data set. This contains information Rapid7 have crawled all over the internet of A records, C names, all DNS related activity that's of interest to you if you're doing bug bounties or security work. The data set itself is all in flat files. It's all text-based data. So it's a zip file or a tarball that you download and within that is just oodles and oodles of text-based data, which means it's very difficult to consume within Vim or to consume on the command line quickly and projects like uh, DNS grep come into this because they've optimized the way that you can access it. There's also a great blog post from OX Patrick about using other mechanisms for this. For today, I want to focus on DNS grep because I think it has the lower barrier to entry, and I believe it's the one that the audience consuming this is most likely to gravitate towards. So in post, I've realized I didn't give a good shout out here. Please give Obi Sam a follow for his work on DNS Grab. He's done an awesome job and he deserves your following because he's likely to release more awesome tools in the future. Documentation is really good here. I don't want to spend too long covering the exact how of DNS Grab, except how to get consuming and get yourself started whilst you're figuring out the mechanics of it. And to put simply, what DNS Grab does is it pre sorts into a binary search tree the Rapid7 DNS dataset and there's an experimental server there that you can use to wrap an API around it. So an example of that, there's a couple of instances that um, Urbisam has put up generously for the community to use, and I'm going to use those for these examples. So you can see in this example, it's running a query of urbisam.com over the API using curl. And what's coming back are the domains in the Rapid7 DNS dataset associated with that. And you don't just have to search the domain. If you're searching for all of the assets in a company like Walmart, you could just search Walmart and see those examples. This gives you a somewhat filtered JSON output to work with. However, I'll also show you some other ways that you can process this using the Microsoft's project that I built. Uh, using Microsobs is a little bit more complicated. You need to clone the repository, 
and then compile the project. After that, you can go into the config.json file for DNS grep, and you can now on the command line, similar to how you used curl before, go and run the same search you did, except now you'll just get the results for ease of piping to other programs. And I fully accept that you can do this using curl and jq and pipe in other means, but what I'm trying to do with this particular project is to lower the barrier of entry in exploring services with a like-for-like -like comparison. So every service here uses a config file that is can be shared across Microsoft's projects. And the added advantage of doing it this way is in that config file, you can provide multiple DNS grep servers to concatenate and combine um, the results of. Not concatenate, it will just combine. Concatenate is when you join two strings back to back. It will combine the results. The ultimate overarching benefit here that you can really get out of DNS grep is if you go over the readme file, you follow the instructions and you stand up your own server for two main reasons. One, there's probably a third because there's always three when I say two, but the first reason you can go ahead and make sure it's updating more frequently. You can wrap your own cron job, your own processes around. You can get a researcher account from Rapid7 and get the most up-to-date updates. The second benefit is that you can edit your own server to feed more results back. These two public sources are a little bit more limited. Totally, totally understand that because they're being consumed publicly. But if you have a private droplet where you've provisioned this and you've got it up and running, you can say, look, just give me everything in one big hit. Don't paginate the results. I just want everything, which can make it quicker when you're working on the fly and you need to process results um, without that delay and without other hacky approaches around it. So I would advise, end of this, is to decide how you're going to consume the data set. Are you going to code this into your own project using the JSON endpoint? Are you going to use something like Microsoft's and just put it in a shell script and pipe to it? Then secondary to that, how are you going to host that data? Are you going to use the public servers and just put a few of them into a config file or are you going to host your own server? And ultimately it comes down to where your time is going to go. It might at this point be quicker to use the public sources get familiar with Rapid7 FDNS and then go, okay, I'm going to look at other ways such as the one OX Patrick has presented or hosting your own DNS grep server for consuming this information. But what you've done is you've created a better baseline for results that you can now combine with other services. And beyond that, I would advise starting to look at using services more directly, understanding them. And that's not to say don't use Subfinder, don't use a mass, don't use Find Domain, but take the time to understand what each service does. Play with security trails for a while, play with Spice for a while, and just understand what each brings to the table, even if there is a way to consume them within those tools. Taking that next step of knowing what it's doing, then looking at how a mass accesses it, looking at how Subfinder accesses it, can you do it differently? And starting to make the most out of your recon scripts by coding in services directly. And that in essence is what I'm aiming to do with Microsubs. I've provided templated code in Go, C++ and Python for a variety of services, not so you can actually use Microsubs itself, but so you can take that code, put it into your own project and just access the services you want to access or the ones you've got keys for and start to get cleaner recon scripts out of the back of it instead of chaining together applications that are hitting variety of services for you and not fully understanding what's happening under the hood. And I think taking that advice and taking it, that approach is going to give you benefit over others that are still earlier in their journey and all they're using is an amass or a sub finder because you're starting to understand your sources and understand your data to a deeper level. And if you enjoyed this video, thank you. It, I don't mean it to sound as critical as it is. It's it's difficult for me to balance giving you the punchy information I want to with not coming across too harsh. I hope I'm finding that balance okay. Um, if you want to have a discussion on Twitter about any of this, or you have any other feedback you want to give me, good, bad, or otherwise, let's 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 chat about it. I'm really interested in how these videos are being perceived, how I can do better, and I'm putting a lot of energy into this this year and. Feedback is what will make me grow as a creator and be able to ultimately uh, serve this content to the best of my ability. And all of that said, thank you and cheers.